Did you ever tell you about when Eliza and I laugh about the song Africa by Toto? The, he says, you know, whatever it is, like, she's coming in 1230 flight. And it's supposed to be this like sexy middle of the night. She's coming in like, here we go. But they didn't say AM or PM. So we sing our own version that it's like, she's coming in 1230 flight. She's landing just in time for lunch. Today at No Panic Pantry, we are focusing on another of the great American pizza styles, the bar pie. This is not Neapolitan, puffy crust, big structured doughs. This is about thin, crispy pizza made in a pan like this with cheese and sauce and toppings all the way to the edge, crispy cheese edge. But I'm gonna show you how to do it in the most convenient at home way possible. You don't have to be an expert on pizza shaping. You can make great, bar pies at home. Uh, this version is inspired by Vito and Nick's on the south side of Chicago, one of my favorite pizzerias in the world. Here's the thing about Chicago. Everyone likes to think that deep dish is the, the official pizza of Chicago, but the real Chicago heads out there know it's tavern style. It is bar pie. It is thin, crispy, snacky, cut into little squares. So I'll show you two ways to do it. One in like a very like kind of fancier electric pizza oven and another version in the home oven. So this recipe is going to make you four eight ounce dough balls and that's perfect for a 12 inch pizza. So I'm actually gonna measure the honey first because it's kind of the biggest pain in the ass to measure. And if you're wrong and you pour it into your bowl, everything else, then it's really hard to take it out once there's water in there. Yeast likes sugar. Uh, it is what it eats and it turns into bubbles. Oop, there we go, nailed it. Honey and olive oil tend to stick to bowls a lot. So if you pre-measure it and then pour it, you end up with less than you meant to. So I like to measure the sticky stuff right into the container. Don't drive yourself crazy. If you're off by a gram, it doesn't really matter that much. It's gonna be pizza, it's gonna work out. You want your water heated up to about 100 to 110 degrees, somewhere in that range. And that just kind of helps activate the yeast, make sure it's working right. 365 grams of water. All right, water going in. And then we take our yeast, which is pre-measured out. And if you want, you can kind of mix this around a little first just to get some of that honey and olive oil kind of activated in there. So it's not just all sitting at the bottom. Uh, sprinkle our yeast right on top. We're gonna let this kind of foam up for about two, three minutes just to make sure that the yeast is active and working and is not dead yeast. And you should be able to smell it. You'll start to see, even already, you're seeing some of this kind of foaming and bubbling happening in here. Now remember, uh, with baking percentages, your flour is 100%. 100 grams of flour in something, 100, that's 100% 100 flour. Then if you had 70 grams of water, that's 70% hydration. It's always, a, the percentage is relative to the amount of flour. All right, so we've got 562 grams of bread flour. In a stand mixer, I would do six minutes by hand. I'll probably do eight, let's say. Eight minutes on the clock. Let's go. So first, you're just kind of mixing it to get it going. Just trying to pick up as much of that in there that I can. So we're just basically kneading this. This is a slightly wet dough. It's wetter than a New York pizza dough, which is usually like 57%. This is more, see it's kind of like sticking to your hands a lot more, and that's okay. It's gonna give it a little more of that structure, and it starts to get less wet as you keep kneading it, as it all starts to incorporate into the flour. See how much less tacky it is now? You kind of want to make sure you're just kind of moving it around, you're pulling it back, turn it, just to make sure you're getting all of it. And what this is really doing is it's kind of developing the gluten structure, and that's what makes it kind of really work. This kind of looks like a nice dough now. So what we're going to do now is let this rest for about 20 minutes. The main thing, you want this to not have air on it. So you want to make sure it's covered. I'm going to put it right here in this dough box. You could also wrap it in plastic wrap. Um, basically you want it to just rest and not get oxidized. If it gets too much air on it, what ends up happening is it gets, forms a crust, it dries out. 20 minutes, come back, add the salt, knead it, and then put it in the fridge. I'm out of breath. All right, this has been resting for about 20 minutes. And now, oh, I'm actually gonna put it in here. Uh, and then we're gonna take the salt and we're gonna just Dump it right in, and now I'm gonna remix this. 
and it's gonna kind of make it feel like it's not coming together in the way you want it to, but then eventually it will. When in doubt, more kneading. And see, it kind of looks like it's not coming together now. It's like splitting off. And that's gonna happen when you add salt. And eventually it's gonna come back together. The dough is more relaxed and kind of soft now from having it, the gluten guts to kind of rest for a little bit. And that's kind of what that 20 minutes does. It gets the yeast kind of going. It bounces back, but like slowly. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about this dough. Basically all we're gonna do is ball it up. And you kind of want to treat it like you're stuffing a sock. And what you're basically doing is peeling it out this way and then kind of stuffing the inside. And you want to get this smooth top like this. And then you kind of get up here and you pinch the bottom to make sure there's no weird kind of holes in there. And then I'll kind of give it a little roll. Boom, one, two. You'll see we're getting like little bubbles sometimes. Nobody cares, it doesn't matter. That's it. All right, now into the fridge for one to three days. If you really wanted to make this tonight, you could just leave these out to kind of keep proofing in the box until they kind of seem like alive and ready to go, which is depending on the temperature room is, could be like, you know, four or five hours, something like that. But this is my favorite method. The dough has been in the fridge for two days and then I took it out of the fridge because you want it to kind of rest and come down to room temperature for about an hour before you start cooking with it. All right, so now let's just make a quick raw tomato sauce for our pizza. And we're just gonna do raw tomatoes with salt, pepper, and oregano. And depending on how the tomatoes look, we might add a little oil in there. Um, the idea with this is you're making a thin, crispy bar pizza, so you don't want anything to be too wet or too watery. I'm gonna keep this little lid attached slightly so I can drain some of the liquid out. And then I can always add it back in later if the sauce is like too thick, but I think we'll be in good shape. So I'm just gonna basically do one of these jobs just to get some of that excess liquid on the counter. And now you'll see we have more tomatoiness and a little less of the juice. A little pinch of salt, a little pinch of oregano, a little bit of black pepper. Now you could do this in a food processor. You could just crush it all by hand. You could chop it all up. You could buy crushed tomatoes, but again, I am not a crushed tomato fan. Usually those are like the C grade tomatoes that they don't want to have whole that they just kind of crush up. So now it's going straight into this container. It's a great sound. And this consistency looks kind of perfect to me now for a pizza sauce. I can taste it for salt now. Surprise, surprise, a little bit more. And just like that, folks, we have pizza sauce. If your sauce is like really thin and seems a little watery still, and you're blending it, run the blender and drizzle a little bit of olive oil in there and it kind of emulsifies it like salad dressing and gets it kind of creamy and thicker and that will help you out. So we've got all of our condiments sliced as thin as possible. So the mozzarella is grated. I used a mandolin just to get these paper thin. That way you get more coverage without overloading it. So you get these giant chunks that kind of fall apart. So I want really thinly sliced mushrooms, green bell pepper for some of that bitterness, red onion, garlic, pepperoni. And then uh, if you can buy bulk sausage, that's great. You can also just buy a sausage from the grocery store, squeeze it out of the casing, and just put it right here in your guy. And don't forget our secret ingredient, especially for a Chicago style tavern pie, Jardinier, but not just any Jardinier, our friend, friend of the show, and friend in real life, Courtney Storer's homemade Jardinier, which we had recently in this episode. The messiest, most annoying thing about making pizza at home is getting flour everywhere. And once you have your dough done, this method is the at-home pizza method where you don't have to get any flour anywhere. I'm gonna show you two methods today. We're gonna to have one method using this, not a sponsor, but really awesome countertop Breville pizza oven. I'm gonna show you how to do another version in your regular oven at home. Uh, you do wanna use a pizza stone, uh, which will make it a lot better. This is a trick actually from Kenji Lopez Alt, the great Kenji Lopez, who had a great idea that when you make a bar pizza in your home oven, you put the pizza stone on the top level and keep that middle shelf ready. We're gonna bake this in the pan, but then partway through it gets taken out and finished on the deck. So you get radiant heat coming off the stone on top, hitting the top of your pizza, then we'll take it out and finish it right on that deck right there. So you get that crispy bottom. In a home oven, just as high as it goes, 500 is great. 550, somewhere in there, but 500, 450, whatever your oven does will work out really well. I 
I already forgot what I was doing. But first thing you want to do <laughs> is take some of this semolina flour. You could just do it without the semolina. You could use cornmeal, but I think it just kind of helps a little bit with it kind of not sticking too much on the bottom. And then a lot of olive oil. We're going to do a nice little drizzle of oil on the bottom. And between those two things, it'll keep it from sticking. And also that oil is going to kind of fry up the dough a little bit. And then this guy just goes right in here. You want this to be an even pizza. This is already a little messed up looking and that's fine. I'll show you why. So we're going to start kind of just pressing it out like this with olive oil fingers. And we're just doing it right here in the pan, nice and clean. You can be down and dirty with this because this is a thin crust bar pizza. And see that? We're just pressing it, pressing it, pressing it, pressing it. Fingertips going. Look for little thick spots and then kind of press those out even more. And you want to kind of go up to the edge because one of the things we're doing with this pizza is putting our toppings and cheese all the way around the edge because that is part of the fun of bar pie is there's almost no crust. Sauce next. And you don't need that much sauce because again, very, very thin pizza. You also go pretty heavy on the cheese on these, but the first thing you want to do is get the edges because that's where you get the little crispy business. So we're going right around the edge first. This kind of creates an additional little cheese crust on the edge, which always looks really cool. I like uh, some fresh basil on there just to give us a little something going on in here. Uh, we're basically going to bake this until it's just set, probably like five, six minutes, and then we'll take it out of the pan and put it right onto the deck outside of the pan. And that way it'll kind of get that crispy bottom. Once again, little semolina bottom, olive oil topper, grab your dough ball. Look at that. Isn't that easier than fucking tossing stuff and getting flour everywhere? And now once again, sauce, being careful not to rip the dough. Our cheese is on. Now let's do a little veggie guy for this one. We'll do uh, mushrooms, onions, and uh, green bell pepper, which is one of my favorite for a veggie pizza. These are like super thinly sliced. You can really kind of spread them around and get a lot of coverage without messing up your pizza. And then this guy is gonna go right here underneath. And we'll keep an eye on that and then we'll deck it after it's ready. So now see these edges are kind of set. So now you wanna kind of basically try to start just separating this edge, this little cheese crust edge from the side like this. Get ready for this one, folks. Onto our pizza peel. So now this guy, you can see the bottom is like very pale, so it's not ready yet. So now we deck it until the bottom looks good and the top is like cooked and ready. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Well, that got messed up. So this is the danger of trying to make it really, really thin is sometimes it's too thin and that is a little burned, but uh, it'll be okay. So now we're going to do the tavern style cut the little squares. What I wanted to show you guys is when you make it too thin in a spot, this is what happens. But this is kind of what we're looking for. Holds up, crispy, thin. Mm. That bite was perfect. All right. Okay, so now this guy is just about ready to go. We are just gonna do the old corner flooping. And then, right back onto the deck just to finish the bottom. We always kind of see where we're looking. We're actually pretty close on this. Might not even need that decking, but we'll do it for like a good 30 seconds probably. That guy looks good. And look, if you want it to be a little more well done on the top, you can always uh, hit it under the broiler for a second. But I kind of find that when people over darken their cheese, it just kind of dries the pizza out. Now, the thing that we really want, a light, cheap beer with a thin, crispy slice of pizza. I mean, what else does one want? The fact that you can take a middle slice of a thin piece of pizza and have it hold up like this and be crunchy. Mm, come on. And I love these little cheese edges you get too. Shall we make two more pizzas, Ben? Yes, please. Now we'll do my favorite of the Chicago style pizzas, the sausage and jardinere. 
So the trick to the sausage is you don't have to cook it first, but you want to make sure you put it in little small pieces like this so that they will fully cook by the time the pizza's out. And then the jardinier, just make sure it's well drained. Sprinkle this guy all around. This is a hot jar. You can use a mild jardinier if you want to. And then right in she goes. So I'm just gonna take this thinly sliced garlic, spread it around, and then take our pepperones. And I don't wanna go like a full blanket like we did on that uh, spicy pep, because that will release a lot of fat, which this dough is not thick enough to handle. We want enough coverage that you get, you know, pretty much a pepperoni in every slice. And now this guy is going into this guy. Check on this guy. Oh yeah, see that thin spot. So, you know, little thin spot action still. What did we learn today? I should have had a slightly larger dough ball. Uh, when I make this small of a batch, you want more dough than you think you need. You can always not use it all. I think eight ounces is where we want to be. Like this guy is like exactly what you want. This slice is perfect. So you get this like spicy, acidic, crunchy. Fat and acid, that's the key. That's a nice looking pie. So here's what we learned. I tested this out using a stand mixer and it worked really well. When I mixed it by hand, I ended up losing a lot more of the dough than I expected. So some of these dough balls were a little smaller than I wanted. You really want that eight ounce dough ball. And as a result, you'll see the human error you get with these thin spots is a killer. So what ends up happening is you can't cook the pizza as long as you want to, because that's going to burn like crazy. And so some of them get this kind of pale end on them and it's not ideal. How does it taste? Tastes good. Look at this. Middle piece. That's the content we came for. Crispy, thin, ready to rock. You even see that little bit of rise in the dough. And that is what you want. If it's just a cracker, it's different. Mm-hmm. Nailed it.